Okay, so with this lesson, um, again, I meant to kind of edit this lesson a bit more than I did. We're going to cut out a couple things here and there just to make this a bit easier. Now, this is supposed to be simple because this is called simple interest, right? The formula, again, that we're going to be using is going to be I equals PRT. That's simple interest, right? And if you're looking at your formula sheet, you can see why. Excuse me. You can see why when you compare it to the other formulas we're going to have to work with that are going to be for compound interest. We're going to learn that later. So, um, again, this is P times R times T, right? If we see variables up against each other, we know that means to multiply them. So um, let's go ahead and look at this um, example two. Excuse me. We're going to skip example one. There's a reason I did this type of question where you're looking at interest rates um, as fractions. Sometimes um, you will see an interest rate as a fraction or just a percent in general as a fraction. And we just need to understand how to work with them. But it's really not a big deal. If that comes up, I'll help you guys out with it later. I want to skip that and go right into example two. So example two says, how much simple interest is earned on 4,000 in three and a half years at an interest rate of 5.2%? So as you guys are going through this unit, we're going to kind of keep tacking on formulas as we go. So you have to understand, okay, how do I know which formula I'm going to use? Now, obviously, we only know one formula right now. So you want to get out of that mindset. You want to get out of the mindset of, well, this is the only formula we've talked about. So boom, there it is. How we know is it goes blah, 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 simple interest, yeah? If it says simple interest, guaranteed you are using this formula and only this formula and nothing else. So what we want to know is what I want you to do is you're going to lay out all of the variables, I, P, it's P, this is R, and T. We tend to forget sometimes that I is a variable too. Just because I is on the left side of the equation doesn't mean that um, we can't know it. It's possible we know I, and we're going to try and solve for one of the others. So that's how that's how these questions will change. If it goes blah, 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 simple interest, you're using this formula. However, based on what they're asking us to find, you're going to solve them slightly differently. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through this again, and we're going to see which variables we have, and which variable gets the question mark. Meaning, what variable are we actually trying to find? So it goes, how much simple interest? So right away, that tells us our question mark, right? That, that is the question. How much simple interest? So between I, P, R, and T, which variable stands for simple interest? The I, right? I is interest. So this is the question mark because it asks how much, right? That means I is the question mark. And we keep going. It says, is earned on 4,000. So we need to know what variable this is. Now, we know P, R, and T. It's been a while. But we know principal is the starting amount. R is the interest rate, and T is the time in years. So when it says um, how much interest is earned on 4,000, this is the starting amount, right? If we are earning interest on that number, that's what we're starting with. So the 4,000 is the P. Even if they don't use the word principal, you have to use context clues to understand what is the starting amount. Context clues tells us that's the starting amount. And we have three and a half years. What variable is that? T, right? That's time. Now, be careful here. You're going to want to do... Um, do this as 3.5. Just because if you use 3.5, I can guarantee you're not going to plug it into the calculator, right? Because nobody ever does. So use 3.5 and not 3.5. At an interest rate of, well, we've only got one variable left, but how should we write that? We're not going to put 5.2. What would that become? Well, 5.2 divided by 100, because it's a percent, is 0 0.052. So here's all our variables. So all we have to do from here, once we have our variables kind of laid out like this, is go to our formula and plug them in where we go. The variable that has the question mark stays put. So in this case, I does have the question mark, so I stays put. But everything else gets plugged in. We have 4,000 times 0 0.052. 
and then times 3.5. So go ahead and go to your calculator, plug this in. This is going to tell you how much money you would have earned over three and a half years. Set here. Okay, so over three and a half years, you would have earned $728 if I plug that in correctly and looks like I did. So that's what this is saying. That is how much extra money you would have at the end of three and a half years. Yes, it's only off $4,000, so $728 might pale in comparison, but that's a decent amount of money. Much more than a normal savings account, yeah. So that's how we're going to attack all of these problems. We're going to lay the variables out, I, P, R, T. We're going to see which gets the question, gets the question mark, um, see what are the variables we have, and then solve. Now, again, if, it, if, if we don't know what I is, everything is already by itself. It's easy and good to go. We're going to see some examples later where it's not that simple. But let's go ahead and try this again. Again, I'm going to have you try this question. It goes blah, 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 simple interest, guaranteed. That's how you know you're using this formula, right? So remember, you want to lay out your variables. You want to see which gets the which gets the question mark based on the sentence. Ooh. Let me change this question to be um, how much simple interest. I'm keeping this easier. Okay. Um, which gets the question mark, and then go from there. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so I'm reading through. It says Mitchell deposits 1200 So again, principal means a lot of different things. It means your starting amount, or you could say deposit. So this is P because that's what you're starting with, right? In an account that pays 4.5%, this is my R, and you should have gotten 0 0.045. He keeps the money in the account for three years. Sometimes, guys, especially with time, be careful. They will spell out the time instead of put a number. You might be skimming through the problem and be like, I don't see the time. Read. Sometimes it's a word. And then, just based off of this, we can know that I is the question mark because I, I changed this to be how much simple interest is accrued after three years? How much simple interest? That means I is question mark. So this is going to be another case of just plug and chug. I is question mark, so I stays put. Excuse my terrible handwriting. I'm trying to go a little quickly here. We got P, we got R, we got T. Oops. Times 0 0.045 times 3. Okay, so you should, get, you should get after three years, you would have gained $162. So here's why I changed this question. This formula only finds what we have gained. We gained $162. In the account is still the $1,200, right? So um, that's why I changed it because there's an extra step you would have to do. It's simple enough, but still. Um, to figure out how much is in the account total. Because in the account is what you originally put in plus what you've gained. So this is just what you've gained. Okay, so we're going to keep trying this a couple more times. Um, we're not going to do example four. We're going to try example three and then one more time. So, again, it goes blah, 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 simple interest. You want to keep that in your head. That's how we know what formula we're using. Not just because, well, hey, this is the only formula we know. You want to lay out your variables. I want you to try this one and see if you notice something different here. Ask yourself, what's our question mark based on the question? And then what are all our other variables? Go ahead and take a look. <coughs> I'll have to cut out all my sneezes. Okay, so here's what we're going through. It says, how much principal? How much principal? That means... P is the question mark, yeah? So this is a little bit different now. So it's based on the question asking, right? They're asking. They're asking how much principal, that means P is the question mark. Must be deposited to earn $1,000 simple interest. So 
We are earning a thousand dollars simple interest. What variable is this then? That has to be I, right? So they're asking, what do I have to put into the account to reach this goal? I want to have a thousand dollars interest earned. How much do I have to put in to reach that goal at? You should have been able to get these okay. That's T. 5% is 0 0.05. So again, the variable changes what gets the question mark. It's based on what they are asking, right? How much principal or what? That's the question mark. So we got to keep in mind then, because some people can go, oh yeah, I understand. It says how much principal, so that means P's question mark. What that means is, when I drop this down, P stays put. I'm now solving for P. I don't know P. Why would I plug in anything there? We're going to have to plug in everything else that we know. So I is 1,000. That goes on the left. This is what I was saying when some people forget that we can plug in over here, right? Just because it's by itself doesn't mean that we can't plug into it. We're solving for P. This is um, 0 0.05, and this is 2. So how I usually go about solving these, I usually take care of this multiplication first, and then we go from there. So I'm going to keep dropping this down. we got got 1,000 equals. Let's go ahead and do this in the calculator, 0 0.05 times 2. <laughs> is 0.1. So I'm going to bump this to the front just for my own personal reasons. It doesn't matter though, you can keep it at the back. So that's 0.1. Now we need to get P by itself. So this is 0.1 times P. How should we get the 0.1 away? Divide it, right? Um, division is the opposite of multiplication. So over here, we're going to have 1,000 divided by 0.1. Yes, you will get a bigger number. It's kind of weird how that works. 10,000 should be your answer. Dividing by a decimal actually gets you a bigger number. So what this means is, if you have a goal of reaching $1,000 in two years, in order to get an additional $10,000, you have to deposit 10,000 to begin with, right? You have to have 10,000 in order to earn 1,000, right? This is how it works in the stock market and savings in general. The more money you have, the more money you can earn, right? You're not going to earn millions of dollars off of a hundred bucks or good luck with that. I should say we're going to skip this one because it's a bit more complicated. But we are going to try the last one one more time. Again, read the question, see which variable gets the question mark and then go from there. So I want you to try this one. Be very careful. Yeah see which variable gets the question mark. In fact, actually, I want you to read the question and see if you can tell which variable gets the question mark before we come back to, uh, before we go on. So go ahead, read it, see what is the question mark. Well, the what is the question mark, right? What interest, be careful to keep reading this, rate. If you said I, I is the dollar amount of the interest. Interest rate is the percentage. So that's our question mark. That's R, not I. Again, interest and interest rate are different. Interest, ra interest dollar amount, interest rate, percentage. So this is what we're looking for here. So go ahead, keep going from here. Read the rest of the question and see um, if you know what your variables are. Plug it in to I equals PRT and then solve. Okay, so Alexis invests 5,000. Again, guys, you have to use, you have to know vocabulary, you have to know context clues. Yes, invests starts with I, but it's not I, right? That is the amount of money you're starting with. So 5,000 is actually your principal. You have to pick these questions apart and not just mindlessly, yep, 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 good, why not? Whatever you're starting with, that's P. In a simple interest account for, hey, 10 years, that's T. What interest rate must the account pay so the simple interest gain? Simple interest gain, that's why this is I. Read very carefully, that's all I can say, yeah? Now we're going to go one by one and plug our stuff in. I is 1,000. 
P is 5,000. I'm going to put this in parentheses to keep it all nice and organized. R is the question mark. So R stays put, and then T is 10. Now, I know this looks weird, but I can just multiply these two together to get this simplified. So I have 1,000 equals 5,000 times 10. Yeah, so that's 50,000. Hopefully you didn't need a calculator for that. And then I still have R. This is 50,000 times R. You should divide by 50,000, right? Do the opposite. Now, what we're going to get here, because R is an interest rate, we're going to get a decimal, right? Any time we're working with percents, they, they appear in our calculator as decimals. So you should have gotten 0 0.02. Now, that's, again, the percent as a decimal. So what is this, what is this as a percent? This is 2%. On your test and on your homework, I will ask for the answer as a percent. However, I can, I'll go back and regrade it. If you leave it as 0 0.02, I can regrade it. But make it easier on me, please, and write your answer as a percent. So to sum up on your homework, again, what you have to do is you have to attack each question as if you've never seen it before. Don't go into a question going like, oh, it's going to be like this one. Um, tease the question mark. Sure, why not? Read it. Identify what is the question mark. Fill in the rest from there and then go to solve. Depending on what the question mark is will change um, what you're doing to solve the problem.